Hey yo, check this out, man. It's the infamous mob motherfucking D. H A V O C. You know what I mean? Prodigy right here. And right now you checking out Monch Reality, motherfuckers. Clothes. I remember that day he came to my crib. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, whoa, so we going shopping? Right, right. Clothes. We went and bought jewelry, gold jewelry. teeth, leather jackets. Everything that we could possibly <laughs> get our fucking hands on. Right. Mine's is easy. The realest shit that I ever wrote was Temperature Rising. Because every time I say it on stage, it's like, it don't get no realer than that. I don't even think I could have wrote a better rhyme describing the situation. What up, son? I heard they got you on the run for a body. Now it's time to stash the guns. They probably got, they probably got the phones tapped, so I won't speak long. Give me a hot second, and I'm gonna put you on. It's all messed up, somebody snitching on the crew. The word is on the streets, they got pictures of you. The chorus be like, have you ever lost a loved one? You never know love yeah. till you lost one. Till you lost one, we your heart at. I left mines behind when my dilly departed. We your heart at, strength missing, to take losses. Be the hardest, the ones that overcome, be the strongest, strive regardless. We your heart at, brave hearted, you better finish what you started, son. Do it, Mob D. Oh man, that's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, it's Mob D. That's not a fair question. Um, my favorite cartoon character of all time, I have a lot of them because I used to lot, watch a lot of uh, cartoons, but I would have to say Voltron. Ready to form Voltron. Let's go Voltron! You know what I mean? Uh, Voltron and why is because they used to like form together and battle evil, like, you know what I'm saying? Because I always dream of like having an ill crew that forms together and we just battle what we gotta do. So Voltron was just like so ill to me. That's classic. Word, son. Voltron, son. Oh, yeah. Son, and I couldn't even afford the toys to get them at Christmas. That's why I hate I Christmas. I never had a Voltron. The big robot with all the things me on neither. it. Neither, me neither. Me neither. But <laughs> remember back then? Yeah, when we was, was like yeah. 11 and 12? That was the hottest shit up. Voltron? That shit Wasn't was there something just like Voltron? They copied off of it, so. Transformers. It was something else. They go bots, go bots, go bots, one robot. Go bots. It was like the cars, go bots. But um, what's the name? I think my favorite, my favorite cartoon was like uh, I used to like, I used to like Tom and Jerry. That shit was mad funny. Like, nah, that I would have said that that was my favorite one. That was but funny. moving forward, yeah, Tom and Jerry was crazy. That shit and fucking Rain and Stimpy. Cause I was smoking mad weed when the shit came out. I used to be dying every day. <laughs> Yo, to all the weed smokers out there, if you smoke weed, you can see the seriousness inside of cartoons. Because if you look at a cartoon like kind of like sober and not high, you just look at it on the face of it. But when you high, you be like this, like, yo, Yo, who the fuck? Right, Right, it's real messages in the cartoon. Yeah, we was actually there with him. Nate was there. Nate, that's like we. That was a great loss, man. Hip hop. So he was. He brought something new to the table. Like his voice and the way he he sing some dog shit. That was hell, yo. But one thing that I got from um, Nate Dogg while we was in the studio with him was that he was real quiet. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Maybe because we didn't know him or we wasn't friends with him or whatever. But the sense that I got from him that he was real quiet and serious about his business and doing what he was doing. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know. Yeah, he was. He was like real serious. He was serious. He was serious about it. Real serious. He wasn't playing either. He he wrote that shit and that shit was fire. Imagine what he had on his mind. I believe that the end was just, you know, he was a fan of hip hop, he was a fan of Mob Deep, and he just did that on his own. You know what I mean? And I didn't know about it until um, I actually watched the movie. I was shocked. As soon as it came out, I was like, oh shit. 
And then I, hit, I think I hit Chris, and he was like, yeah, yeah. He wanted Chris Lighty. It, yeah, he wanted it to be a surprise or something like that. Like, I don't know, that's, that was crazy. That was that was him, man. Shout out to him for that. I think that he totally has a grip on the rap game. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, and he became super uber rich off of it. So it's like he already accomplished what he needed to. Man. Right, it doesn't even matter. He can run around and be a tyrant if he wants to. Yeah, right, you know what I'm saying? Music, change, mu yeah, music changes, you know what I'm saying? It might not be Mob Deep music or whoever's music. You might think that we don't got a grip on it, but regardless, we, we still have a grip on it because we about to perform in front of a sold out crowd. And I'm sure that 50 could come to Montreal right now and perform in front of a sold out crowd. So I don't think that that's anything less than a grip. That is a real grip, you understand? He's a superstar, he's bigger than his music. You understand? And that's not just to, like, to try to big up, you know, 50 Cent because he's from New York or whatever, whatever. But look what kind of bread he got. He got paper, you understand me? The biggest, the biggest lie ever told, and I know Prodigy is gonna agree with me, the biggest lie ever told is that skin color matters. That's the biggest one of all time. Yeah. Like we all have the same heart, nope. same blood. Nope. I could give a Jewish person my blood if he needed a transfusion, if it matched. That's true. We all human. You understand? The biggest lie ever told is that skin color separates us. That's the biggest lie ever told. That's Yo, my mom be doing that shit for real. The past is called past life regression. No, I, I looked up my shit already. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's why I said that. My mom be doing that shit. For I was, real. I was, I was. No matter of fact, I wasn't an emperor. I'm sorry. I was a um, a artist, a painter. Uh -huh. I was a painter, and I was something about whatever, whatever, blah blah blah. And I got poisoned. And I got poisoned by a, a, a one of my concubines. Well, that makes a lot of fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so I, I no, just I gave him my name. No, I know, but I just gave him my name. But you know, like your character now. Like, yeah, I just gave him my name. Sense. So I was a, a, like one of those artists that was commissioned That's by, crazy, yo. by like, like the emperor. Yeah. And they commissioned me. That's and I was mad famous. And then one of the chicks poisoned me. And That's I died. That's crazy, yo. Why would they say that? That's crazy. Did they, they ain't know you? No, they don't know me at all. They don't know what I do. That's what they said. Check this out. My mom's had a past life regression. Cause that's what it's called. They go through hypnosis. Right. And then while you hypnotize sleep or whatever, they talk to you and you talk and saying whatever it is that right. it was. Because you're under hypnotism. So my mom was like, yo, she went and did it. And they said that uh, she was like in the Jewish camp and she had me as a baby in some Jewish camp, like the Nazis was trying to right, right, right. take us or whatever, and she escaped. And she had to leave me somewhere by myself. She had to leave me there with, with a family, with another family, and she left me. Did she go back and get you? Nah. Well, so I'm not even gonna do that, so I'm gonna knock on wood. I don't never want to pick my last meal. I can answer that easy for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll let him answer it. What, what is it? Wuleo, man. Trinity, <laughs> Wuleo. Crack, Korean, they gotta give us a check. Korean barbecue. Korean barbecue is the shit. That is a scary feeling, because I, I sat in the shoes of people that like they last meal, mm. and that is very, 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 I don't even want a meal. Man, niggas ain't think about no meal. When I don't even to want a meal. <laughs> I don't even want a meal. Whoa. If you about to kill me, I don't want a meal. I'm going to get up off that gurney and y'all going to have to knock me out before I Yo, even... You know what's ill? I read an article one day. It was it was, it was was an article written by nurses mm -hmm. that was... Their job is to be by people bedside while they dying. Oh, they picking the wrong all, medicine. And no, 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 no. It's all the, the quotes and all the things that people would say on their deathbed. And it was all, and, and every single one of them was all, they all said shit like, I wish I wasn't so angry all the time. I wish I enjoyed life more. I wish I was more happy. I wish I laughed more, smiled more. Like all of them said the same shit. And it was like a, sur it was like a, like a, a survey, I guess, of people on their deathbed and the things that they would say and how they would talk to the nurses or whatever. And these are the shit that we say. Well, 
<clears throat> the reason why I, why I don't want to think about what's the last meal I would want or the last thing I would say or anything like that, because we all prone to being in that position one day. Uh, Trust me, mm-hmm. you might not think it. You understand what I'm saying? But we all prone to being on that thing one day when they gonna lay the thing in your veins. And I put myself on that bed and I go like this, I go, damn, like, what the fuck is these niggas think? Those are the strongest niggas on the earth. Because you can't get me on that thing. That's crazy. You can't get me on, I, I don't get, to get me on that thing to kill me, it's so gonna take like the death penalty. Like, yeah, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna take everything for you to get me on it. You're gonna have to knock me out. Yeah, so I'm already gonna be out. Yeah, that's more shit. To get me on that bed, they gonna have to kill you. <laughs> that's <laughs> what right there. They're gonna have to kill me because I'm be like, no, fuck you, nigga. They they can't get me. They're, they're gonna, gonna have to, kill they're gonna have to kill punch you. me in my face. <laughs> they're gonna strap my shit down. And then even if they got these things on here, I'm gonna get my hand out of it. <laughs> He said he had because to you're kill, about to kill, kill me. me. Because you know what it is? Because you're about to go to sleep. Hey, and you not that waking was, back up. Was, and now you're about to introduce me into something else. Because once you put me to sleep, I'm so conscious that I'm waiting for the next shit. It's definitely something next. I said, yo, uh, I said, yo, situation being, man. I'm you be like this. Fun. You be like this. These niggas going like this. But most of the niggas that they do it to deserve it. Message to the youth. Oh man, yo. You want my, 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 my message to the youth is this. Be better than us. Be better <laughs> than the last generation. Be better than us. So I tell my kids all the time. You know what I mean? Each generation is supposed to get better than the last one. Smarter, you know what I mean? Making better moves. That's it. Once reality, kid. Bye.